Well, hello there, and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I am thrilled you are joining me for the My First Toe Up Socks using Judy's Magic Cast On and a German Short Row Heel. This is a three-part video series that will walk you through everything you need to know to make this very basic vanilla toe-up sock pattern. I will show you tips and tricks I have along the way to help you prevent holes and how to master some of these fantastic skills. This is part of the 2020 sock, sock Along I am doing in collaboration with my friend Ron Strong. Ron designed a toe-up crochet sock pattern while I did the toe-up knit sock pattern. Both patterns are available and free on my website. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. Go ahead and click on that link to get your free pattern for this part of the video and follow along with me. Now, I will suggest that as you watch the video the first time, watch it all the way through before you jump in with your first pair of socks. It will help you better understand what exactly it is you're expected to do. Then watch the video again and work along with me. It just makes for a better experience. If there's a point in the pattern you're looking to jump to, I've put those timestamps in the video description box below as well. So if there's a particular item you're looking for, take a glance down there. Chances are I have it timestamped for you. Before we start with the pattern, I do want to take a quick look at the anatomy of a sock and the tools you will need for this knit along, and then we can jump in with Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe. So let's go ahead and take a look at this very nice nice and lovely worsted weight sample I have made up of a toe-up sock. Now, just as the name suggests, a toe-up sock starts off right down here at the toe, and we will use Judy's Magic Cast On to create what looks like a seamless toe. Once we get those stitches cast on, we will then increase on either side of the toe, and we will get to the number of stitches we need for the size sock we are needing. Now, as far as what size you should make, that is determined by your foot circumference. It's very simple to measure that. Simply take a tape measure and wrap it around the ball of your foot, and that will give you your foot circumference. Make the size according to that, and you are good to go. Once we reach the number of stitches we want for the toe of our sock, I will have you add a stitch marker, and that will come in handy when you make your second stock, sock. And from there, you begin just working in rounds and rounds and rounds of stockinette stitch until you reach the foot measurement you need for your sock. And this measurement will be your total foot measurement minus this bit right here for the heel. That is written in the pattern, so you don't have to guess with it. So um, now you understand where that number is coming from, okay? So when the pattern says to work your foot until it measures like an inch and a half or two and a half inches from the full foot length, that is going to be right about at this point. It's at this point that we will leave all of these instep stitches on a needle and we will continue on just working with our heel stitches back and forth to create a German short row heel. So the first half of the short row heel is right here. That's what will continue on for the rest of your foot. And then the second half of the German short row heel is where it turns the sock so that way we can go up the leg. Okay. After you've completed your German short row heel, you are back to working in full rounds across the instep stitches. And for our pattern, we're just working stockinette. So you would work stockinette for the leg until it reaches the measurement in the pattern or until you're nearly done with your sock. And then you will work a nice ribbing. We're also going to learn how to do a nice stretchy bind off because you want a stretchy bind off so that way you can actually get the sock on your foot. It's pretty inconvenient if you can't get the sock on your foot after you've put all of that work into it. So this sock pattern is actually written for sock yarn. This sample was made up using some worsted weight yarn so I could show you exactly how the sock works up in the different sections. But the sample you will be working with is in sock yarn. Now how much yarn do you really need to make socks?
When making socks, a good rule of thumb is that you need about 100 grams of sock yarn, okay? So anywhere from 400 yards to almost 500 yards. You'll notice in my sock pattern, I wrote it up using Peyton's Croy sock yarn, and I did put in there three balls for the larger sizes, and that was just in case people wanted to make the leg of their sock longer, um, and they didn't want to run out of yarn because the foot of their sock was long enough. But if you aren't going to use Peyton's Croy sock yarn, you can use um, hanks of yarn that you might find at your local yarn store, and you'll notice Notice that when you buy sock yarn at your local yarn store, it usually comes in just about 100 grams of yarn. So this sock yarn here from Stunning String Studio called Smashing Sock, it comes in 100 grams or 460 yards. This lovely sock yarn um, from Bewitched Pigment Pigments Fiber Arts is also 100 grams, but it's 435 yards. It's a little bit thicker than this yarn here. That's why it's a little bit less yardage, but still I can get a full pair of socks out of one hank of each of these. So these equal 100 grams. Hopefully that answers your question when it comes to how much yarn you need. It's kind of common sense. You need 100 grams, but if you're making a sock with a bigger foot and a longer leg, you're going to need a little bit more. Pretty simple stuff, right? How about needles? What size needles and how many needles and what types of needles do you need for this sock pattern? Okay. So in reality, you only need one really long pair of size two needles, okay? And this will allow you to do magic loop. And when I say really long pair, anything longer than 24 inches will get the job done. These are size two, five inch, 47 length needles. So these are a five inch needle with the 47 overall length from the tip to tip, okay? Those are what you need if you're gonna do magic loop. If you're not comfortable with magic loop and you wanna try two circulars, well then, you need another pair of circular needles. The other pair does not necessarily have to be the same brand or even the same type as the first pair. It is helpful though if they are. They do have to be the same size needle, but they do not have to be the same length. So I could use a different length needle should I choose. So right here, here's a 32 inch needle and this is a 47 inch needle. And so these would pair up really well for two circulars. Do you have to have two different lengths of needles? Absolutely not. I just find it helpful to be able to distinguish one needle from another. And more often than not, people are more apt to have two different lengths of the same size needle than two of the same length of the same size needle. Okay, does that make sense? Um, these are just some of the needles that I have uh, been gifted as far as to try out for socks. These are signature needles. These are all done by Addies. These are the new Rocket Squares. These are square needles. These are the Addies Sock Rockets. These are the Addy Turbo Lace. They have a nice pointy tip. And then these ones here, these are the Addy Natura, and these are bamboo. So there's a lot of options here. You will notice that all of them though are larger than 24 inches. Okay, you can do it with 24 inches. It just makes it more difficult. So it's always better to have them a little bit longer. Now I know some of you came to this video thinking, wait a minute, I wanna use nine and a half inch circulars. Can I use the really short circular needles? Well, yes, you can. However, when we work the toe of the sock, we are going to make it using magic loop or two circulars. Then when you get to the leg of the sock, that's when you can pull in your nine inch circular needles should you choose to do that. So we can go from the longer magic loop to the shorter nine inch circulars without any problem. And as far as the nine inch circular needles, there's a lot of options out there. These ones here are the signature needles and you'll notice that one is a a very nice pointy tip and the other is a little bit more of a, a blunt tip and it makes it nice so as you're knitting if you like to have that nice pointy tip you can keep that in your right hand and work along with those. There's also these Cassell Easy Knit uh, needles. These are 10 inch needles but notice one needle here is longer than the other needle. So one thing that's great about that is because my hands are a little bit bigger, it's actually easier 
for me to have the longer needle in my right hand and be able to work around really nice and neat in the round using these circular needles. Now these tips are very blunt, so that is something that if you are not a fan of blunt tips, that's something you might not like, but these are really great for that style. Besides these, you could also do a entire interchangeable set. So here is a shorty set by Chaigu. And the great things about this set here is it comes with multiple cord lengths. Okay, so I'm using some cords right now. But it comes with multiple cord lengths in this cute little carry-on or carry all, I should say. And it has um, a uh, needle gauge. It has the things you use to tighten. And these are like needle stops. These are stitch markers. But the piece de resistance is this little thing here. You open this up and you can see there are needles here sized from zero to size three US. And there is a short length here and there is a long length length in the same size. You see that? So I can essentially recreate the Scassell needle here with a long needle in one end and a short needle in the other end. And with these ones, I get a nice pointier tip with the chai gu, can you see that's a pointier tip there? Um, and it works really well. Now you don't have to do that. You can keep them both really nice and short or you can keep them both nice and long. Um, that will alter your overall length of your piece. But I have a sample right here that I have worked up. Here is my longer one, here is my shorter one. And I find it easier as I am working in the round with this to have my longer one in my right hand just to simply just knit in the round, okay? So um, there's all different price points with all of these needles, but they are some good options for you. Um, I know that there are some other needles out there by Knit Picks and Knitter's Pride and Haya Haya that you could also try and check out, but these are the ones that I have here at my house that have um, sent me samples to try out and I am loving them, so I wanted to show them all to you. Overall though, here is the gist of it. If you wanna make these socks, you really only need one pair of size two, nice long needles to do magic loop. If you wanna do the nine inch circulars, you still need these needles, and then you just need your nine inch circulars. If you're not comfortable with magic loop and you're not comfortable with this, then you just need to get yourself another pair of circular needles so that way we can do two circulars. All right. The only benefit to all of these is really up to you. You have to find what you're comfortable with. That's the beauty of working these toe up socks in a, in a knit along and a sock along as we're calling it, is that you get to try out different styles. You might find that the magic loop is your preference. You might find the two circulars are your preference. You might find that you absolutely hate the nine inch circulars or you absolutely love them. You find out what works best for you and then you can decide what you wanna use in the future. The only reason I am not showing you how to use DPNs is because many of you know I've already done a my first top-down sock using DPNs and I feel like I went over DPNs in that video series really well and this is another series for you to learn new tools and a new skill. All right, so those are the needles. That is the yarn. Some of the other tools that you might want to have on hand as we're working these socks are these. All right, so of course a tape measure is gonna be handy, but then this little tool, a heel to toe ruler, I have found super handy, and I have just now started using one of these, but it is essentially helpful for when you get the toe of your sock done and you're working on the foot and you need to measure how much you have left to go. You simply fit this little ruler inside your sock and you're able to measure where your sock is and you can see how much further you might have to go before you start your heel. This is not mandatory, but it's super helpful. Of course, you could always just use a tape measure instead. But this piece here was from Wild Stitchers. It has a little helpful Kitchener stitch here if you wanna use it for top down socks. And I just found this really, really helpful. So this is a good tool to have along with a tapestry needle, a good pair of scissors. 
You will need a stitch marker and you want to get one that's not going to snag. So right here, there's a whole bunch of stitch markers here, but this is really just like a, a little earring thing that has a bunch of stitch markers on it. So I will just take one off and I will be using like one or two of those stitch markers. Okay. So you need some stitch markers. Those are just really simple stitch markers. Along with stitch markers that will go on your needle, you want to have stitch markers that you can mark on your actual sock. So this piece here, I got this from Amazon, you guys, and it was not that expensive, maybe 10, 12 bucks. And it has a bunch of different safety pin like stitch markers in here, but they don't have a coil at the bottom of the safety pin. So it makes them very great to use on your sock because they aren't going to snag anything, but they can go directly through a stitch. And it's a great way for you to be able to mark a point in your sock that you can leave in place. And when you make your second sock, you have a place to measure one sock to the other, and you will ensure that you have two perfectly matching socks. So I'll be sure to put a link to this and this and all the supplies in the pattern itself. So when you click on that pattern, you will get a link to all of these supplies that I talked about if you're interested in getting any of these. All right, so those are the supplies you need. Now let's go ahead and jump in and learn Judy's Magic Cast On. Let's begin with the Magic Loop and Judy's Magic Cast On. You want to make sure you leave a long enough tail to cast on the number of stitches you wish to cast on. I will show you first how to do this using a slip knot, and then I will show you how to do it without a slip knot. Place the slip knot directly onto the needle that is furthest away from you, and place the other end of your circular needle closest to you. So this is our top needle, this is our bottom needle. You want to then position the yarn very similar to a long tail cast on, but this time you want the tail over your forefinger and the working yarn over your thumb. We are now going to rotate our needles and grab yarn to place stitches on our needle. So here we go. We're gonna place the first stitch on our bottom needle, the one closest to me. So I rotate my needles up towards my pointer finger, and I'm gonna go over top of that yarn and scoop it up with that bottom needle, and then come back to my starting position. I now have two stitches total and one stitch on each needle because this slip knot does count as a stitch. I then will rotate my needles down, go over top of that yarn and scoop up that yarn with the top needle. Go back to the forefinger, scoop that yarn with the bottom needle. You continue to do this until you get the total number of stitches cast on for the size you are making. You will notice that every time I do a pass, I get one extra stitch on each needle and my overall stitch count will be divisible by two, which means I will have half the number of stitches on the top needle and the other half of the stitches on the bottom needle. That also means that I want to do my very last stitch on my bottom needle because I started with the first stitch on the top, I want the last stitch on the bottom. Take a second and count your stitches to make sure you have the number you need for the size you're making. When you reach that number, it's very simple. We now take our needles and I will rotate them around. So it's just like when you do a basic cast on, you, once you get those stitches cast on, you put those needles in your, or the needle in your left hand. Now I want you to notice right there, see how that tail, this is the tail, it looks like it wants to slip off that needle. We don't want it to do that. So the best thing we can do here is before we grasp our working yarn, take that working yarn and just wrap it around that tail once, okay? If I rotate my needles over, you can see that the yarn is just wrapped around the tail once, just to position it in place and not let that stitch go anywhere. 
This position here I am in, where the, the cord is down here and the needles are just like so. This is gonna be our starting position for magic loop. This will also be our starting position for two circulars when that time comes. This is the position you will uh, uh, achieve prior to placing these bottom stitches onto a cord and proceeding. So I've reached my starting position. I will take my bottom needle and I will pull my bottom needle out and I will have those stitches on the bottom now rest on the cord of this needle. As I bring this needle back around to use it, you will notice that my cord comes around over here, it comes up, it goes through those stitches, then it comes around here and it comes up and I'm ready to work with it, okay? Now, did I just lose a stitch? I wanna make sure I don't lose that one right there. You have to be very careful, okay? When in doubt, count your stitches just to make sure, okay? Once you've hit this position, this is the magic loop position, you are ready to knit all of these stitches on this first needle, okay? So this is needle one. This would be considered our first half of the actual sock. And needle one has all of our instep stitches and needle two will have all of our sole stitches. So that is needle one. Once you hit the end of needle one, you then rotate your work, okay? Be very consistent with this. Rotate your work, get back in the starting position. So now you want those stitches that were on a cord, you want them to get back onto a needle. So you move your needle up, back into those stitches, okay? I'm in my starting position. I pull my bottom needle off, have those stitches rest on the cord, and I continue on. Now, you'll notice right here that this slip knot is really visible, especially in the worsted weight yarn. When you're using the sock yarn that the pattern is written for, you will barely see that slip knot, but it is there. So if you choose to do just a twisted stitch at the start instead of a slip knot, it does make it so that the slip knot is obviously not there because you didn't do it. Um, but that is an option for you. I'm just showing you on this worsted weight yarn because it's easier for you to see in the video, okay? But for your socks, you will be using the smaller size uh, needles and the smaller size yarn. As we work down this needle too, the first stitch will be resting on our needle just like normal. But after we do Judy's Magic Cast On, our stitches are resting on our needle backwards. See how that back leg is ahead of that front leg? we want to make sure we knit through the back leg of each one of these stitches. And it will only be on this particular row that we do the stitches through the back leg. As long as you are knitting your stitches so that they mount regularly, you should always be able to knit through the front leg as normal. It's only on that one pass, and it's because of the nature of Judy's Magic Cast On. You notice I finished that row, or that needle, I'm getting back to my starting position. I wanna make sure here, see how my yarn accidentally always gets up there? I just make sure it goes back underneath. And I'm back to my starting position and I've worked my Judy's Magic Cast On and then I knit one round evenly, okay? You can see between there that I have stitches ready to go and this would be the tip of my sock. Congratulations, you just completed Judy's Magic Cast On and you're ready to carry on with the toe instructions. I have already worked up a toe of a sock, and you can see right here, this is where Judy's Magic Cast On began. And then on the side of the toe, we have these increase points. And these increases that I used are a right lifted make one and a left lifted make one. These are really easy increases. And the reason I chose to use them is they do not leave any sort of a hole 
when you do them correctly. Now, I do want to let you know that on many different sock patterns, there are many different ways to work increases for the toe. It could be a knit front and back. It could be a bar make one. It could be a yarn over. I mean, sky's the limit. So just because I'm choosing this particular increase does not mean it's the only way to do it. It's just a good one to have in your knitter's toolbox. And I really do love it as I'm working increases on the toe of the sock because I do not get holes. You begin your first increase round directly after you do that one solid round after you've done that cast on. So I'm back at my starting position. I will go ahead and move my bottom needle down so that way those stitches are on the cord. I want to ignore my tail completely at this point. Okay, I'm just gonna move it out of the way and I carry on. Now I like to add a stitch marker at the start of my round on needle one because it signifies that that is the start of the round. So I will go ahead and following the instructions, I will knit one, I will take a marker and place that marker directly onto my needle. Now the instructions say to do the right lifted increase, okay? Now, looking at this stitch here on my needle, I'm gonna call that the daughter. The stitch directly underneath the daughter, I'm gonna call that the mother. I want to take my right hand needle and going from behind, I wanna pick up the right leg of the mother. Can you see that? Picking up the right leg of the mother and I will place that right leg on my left hand needle so it looks like a stitch. Now I want to knit it. I've just worked my increase. I go ahead, I knit my next stitch, and I will knit all the stitches all the way down this needle to the last stitch. So there's my last stitch, and it's at this point that I will go ahead and do my left lifted make one. So over here we have the daughter, underneath the daughter we have the mother, underneath the mother we have the grandmother. I wanna take my left hand needle this time and going into the left leg of the grandmother, can you see that? The left leg of the grandmother, I now place that on my left hand needle and I will knit it through the back leg and just knit it. Then I knit the last stitch. So I did a right lifted make one and a left lifted make one. This one will lean to the right and this one will lean to the left. Once I've done that on needle one, rotate around, get my stitches and needles back in the starting position Okay, I'm back in the starting position, move my bottom needle away, so now those stitches are on a cord, and I carry on on this one. So, for needle two, I will knit one, I will do my right lifted increase, so not into the daughter, I go down here into the mother, and going from the back, I pick up that right leg, and then I put it directly onto my left hand needle, and then I knit into it. Knit the next stitch, or the stitch, which would have been the daughter. So I've worked my increase. I now will knit over to I get to until I get to one stitch before the end of this needle. And I wanna work my left lifted make one. So not the daughter, not the mother, the grandmother, I'm going to go from behind and pick up that left leg, put it on my left hand needle, and I will knit it through the back leg, and then knit the last one. Okay, I rotate my work, get my needles back in the starting position. and I carry on. So this next round, I just will knit. So you do an increase round, and then you just do a plain knit round. So I have my stitches back down here on 
a cord and I can come up here and simply knit. And see how useful that is to have that marker there because it lets you know when you're back to the start of the round. I find that very helpful, okay? So I'm just gonna show you how knitting around on these stitches is really just as simple as it sounds. Rotate your work, place your stitches back on the needle so you're back in the starting position pull the bottom needle so that those stitches are on a cord and carry on you might see it might seem like you have a little bit of a bump here at the top it's really not as bad as you might think it is it's just that everything is starting to take shape and turn so that you're creating this circle here but once you get going along and this kind of cups around like so, it begins to hide a little bit more. Okay, so I'm back to the start, get back in my starting position right here, and I carry on. Now that I just finished a regular knit round, I'm on another increase round. I want to pull in a different sample swatch of a toe that I've already worked up because it has a little bit more fabric on it and I think you'll be able to see a little bit better how those stitches are getting created and I also want to point out how you would know if you had already increased on the round or if it's time to increase on the round because I know you guys are like me and you won't be able to keep track all the time and you need to know how to read your stitches and recognize if you're on an increase round or not if you happen to put your work down and pick it up later. So let me grab another sample of mine that I have worked up. Okay, so here I have a little sample worked up. Again, it's just a basic toe. As you get working along, it starts to cup around on itself just like that, okay? And I will get back into a starting position. I'm just gonna put the top stitches on. The yarn will be coming off of the needle underneath the one on top. So that is one way when you pick it up, you're like, where am I? The yarn will always be coming from the opposite needle. So whatever needle is on top, that will be the first needle you wanna work with. And if you have the marker in place, then you know you're at the start of your round. It's really convenient. Okay, so I have this little toe worked up. Let me get some of this out of the way real quickly. I have all sorts of things that want to jump in and, and play with, with me here. Okay, I'm going to knit this first stitch, move my marker, and I'm right here. Now I have to decide, am I on an increased row or not? Because I put this down. I just, I don't even know. So I'll, the first thing I usually do is I will take this next stitch and I move it over and I try and recognize if it looks like it's through an actual stitch or if it looks like it's through the mother, like when I did an increase. Well, I can tell right here, I'm gonna keep these spread apart real quick. I can tell right here that this stitch on my needle is coming through that stitch there, which came through that stitch there, which was the mother. So I increased a couple rounds ago, which means that last round I did was a regular round. Okay, so I can tell here I am on an increase round. And the other way I can tell is if I pull that leg of the mother like I'm supposed to, if it was already made from the mother stitch prior, if I did an increase on the prior row, I would get a big hole. So you want to make sure that as you're pulling that stitch up, that leg up from the mother, and you knit it, you should not have a hole. And as you get going, you will notice that you have this really nice line of stitches happening right here. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on. And I just knit down to one stitch before the end of this needle. And remember, needle one has my instep, which you can think of it as that's the top of your foot. So needle one has the top of my foot, needle two has the sole of my foot. And the sole of my foot will also be where I am creating my heel when it's time. All right, so I need to go one stitch and I can take a look here. And again, I can look at the grandma stitch that I would need to work into. And as I pull that left leg of the grandma stitch out, 
I can see that it's, it's not giving me a distorted look. And so I can tell that I'm on an increase row and I just continue on increasing. Now I knew that before because I knew I increased over here, but maybe you have a lot of stitches and by the time you get down here, you have forgotten if you need to increase or not. Well, now you can tell. I'm at the end of my row, rotate my work, get back in my starting position, pull this needle down. See how the cord just kind of pulls around on itself just like that? And I carry on. So I have to remember that I need to increase on this side too. All too often I will forget to do increases on the opposite side. Um, it's a silly thing, but I always tend to forget. Again, I'm going into the mother, the right leg, put that onto my right hand needle, and then knit it. And then I will knit all the way down until one stitch before the end. And we will do the left lifted make one. And get down here. You want to make sure these stitches are nice and snug. The tighter the stitches on socks, the better. Go into the grandmother down here, knit it through the back leg, knit the last stitch, and carry on. So I'm going to do the next one, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you what it looks like if we tried to do a increase into an increase. All right, it looks goofy. I'm back to my starting position, pull this needle out, and I'm back here. Right here. If I tried to do an increase into the stitch that I just increased last time, see how I kind of get a big hole and it, it almost looks like if I bring it up to the top here, it's gonna let that stitch disappear. Like, see how close those are? Like it doesn't even, just doesn't even look right. And then if I tried to knit into it, I get a big gaping hole. It looks like this stitch here is just like a, a random yarn over through it. It's just not good. So just pay attention. Also, you can see here this, this leg that I tried to pull up. It's that nice line that I'm getting right there for my increases. So I don't want to pull up that nice line of increase. It's already in place. So I know that I am not supposed to do an increase on this row if I get something that looks like that. And hopefully that makes more sense to you. So that way, if you came across something that looks like that, as you're knitting these socks, you know what that is. And then you just make sure you don't work that increase. You just let it go. I'm going to come down here and show you the same thing down here at this other end. Okay. So this is where I would get to one stitch before the end. And if I was trying to do an increase in the grandmother, I would pull this one. And again, you can see that mother stitch, it's totally pulling through that grandmother already because I already did an increase last time. It just looks wrong. So you'll be able to tell as you're going around. Okay. Rotate your work. Get back in a starting position. Pull the bottom needle and then go about your business on this side. So I'm not gonna bother showing you what they look like because I just did again. I'm just gonna knit down here. But as I'm knitting on these, I do wanna talk to you a little bit. This entire technique here, all of these stitches right here that we've just done, it's something entirely new to you. So I need you to be very patient with yourself and give yourself a little bit of credit for learning something new. You know what they say, old dogs, new tricks and stuff. We have to allow our hands to get some muscle memory and learn this new technique. So if you want to grab yourself a larger pair of needles and some worsted weight yarn and give this a little bit of a try, very similar to like what I'm doing with the thicker yarn, before you go to your smaller needles and your smaller yarn, I highly recommend that. It's a great opportunity for you to really allow your hands to get used to doing Judy's Magic Cast On, doing this special 
right lifted make one and left lifted make one. It will give you a little bit of a rhythm and confidence before you tackle that really small skinny sock yarn, okay? And remember, be kind to yourself. We tend to give other people a lot of leniency and, and we have patience with others, but when it comes to ourselves and learning something new, we are our toughest critics. So I want you to remember, it's just sticks and string. You will eventually get it. It might not happen right away, but be patient with yourself and keep trying. You can do this. Keep your stitches nice and snug on the needle and then just be patient. Work down the stitches, be very rhythmic, be very systematic, and just enjoy everything that you're doing. If it doesn't come out perfect the first time, that's absolutely okay. The first time I ever did Judy's Magic Cast On, it was a hot mess, you guys. It was so bad. So it's not something that just comes easily to everybody the very first time. You do have to work at it just a little bit. But then once you get it, it like clicks. And then the same thing for this particular increase, once you understand what's going on, once you get a little bit of fabric happening, you will notice what the stitches look like. You will get a nice line and you'll be like, oh, I'm doing it. And then you can say, Marley said I could do it. I knew I could do it. So yeah, that's that. Okay, so those are the increases and you will follow along with the pattern and you will continue to um, work in increase rounds and then a regular knit round until you get the number of stitches you need for the size you are making. Now I do wanna talk a little bit about the size you're making. I mentioned to you earlier, you wanna make the size for the um, circumference of your foot and you measured that around the ball of your foot. If you are somebody who is like me and maybe you have a larger ankle or a larger from heel to the top of your foot, like sort of that diagonal, if you are sort of on the cusp of a larger size or a smaller size, you're sort of that in between, I do wanna mention that it's better for you to go to a larger size versus a smaller size just so that your sock will fit around that ankle portion. These particular socks do not have a gusset. This pattern is not designed to have a gusset. So the section of your sock, let me just grab my sock here. The section of your sock from this point here to this point here could get really snug if you happen to have a larger ankle area at that point. So if you are in between sizes, it's better to kind of err on the side of going a little bit bigger around because that will give you more space at this section when it's time, all right? So that's a little thing about the sizing. So once you get the number of stitches for the toe that you need for the size you are making, that's when you will carry on with the foot of the sock. Once the toe of your sock has reached the number of stitches that you need for the size you are making and you end on a round two, I want you to take one of those removable stitch markers and mark one of the center stitches on the sole of your sock, okay? That marker will make it easier for you to make your second sock and have a point where you can measure the distance from where you ended the toe to where you start the heel, okay? It's just a very handy thing to do. Once you have that stitch marked, you then will work in stockinette stitch until the foot of your sock measures the distance between your toe to your heel minus this amount. You will notice in the pattern that depending on what size you're making, it will say that you need to make your foot an inch and a half to two and a half inches shorter than your desired total foot length and just make sure you follow along with those instructions. So measure your foot from toe to heel and then make like your actual foot and then make the foot of your sock from toe to where you stop an inch and a half to two and a half inches shorter than your desired total length as it's written in the pattern. Pretty easy stuff, okay? Now, as you're working these rounds of stockinette, you can continue with your magic loop or with your two circulars, which we will go over in just a minute, or you can transfer these stitches over to a short nine inch circular. So it's at that point that you simply just grab your nine inch circular and instead of using your opposite needle here, you would just start knitting onto your circulars and at that point, all of your stitches will be on your circulars. Maintain your stitch marker so you know that that's the start of your round. 
and you simply will just knit with these. Now what I have found with these nine inch circular needles is you do not want to grip them like you would just normal needles. Like for these, I really grip them like this. When you're working with these circulars, you really kind of hold them with your fingertips and you hold them nice and loose and you just are a relaxed knitter, just like so. Um, I, you can see here, I even take my ring finger and I stick it out. I'm just really holding it just with my two fingers here and my thumb as I knit. And so as you get going, it becomes very comfortable. It's a very relaxed knit and you can just go round and round and round and round. Now, when it comes time to do the heel, we will transition the heel stitches back onto our circular needle just because it's so much easier to work those German short rows with the circular needle as its separate piece than the nine inch circular. So for sanity's sake, we will go back to the circular needles for this sock. As you become more and more comfortable with your tools, it might be that later on, you are perfectly fine and perfectly comfortable using your nine inch circulars for the heel. But here at the beginning, I want you to go back to your magic loop or your long circular when we get to the heel portion, but we'll go over that at that time. Okay, so this is how you would transfer over to your nine inch circulars. And as far as how to hold them, it's, you just will find a way and just be really nice and relaxed and deliberate about it. And you just knit and you will knit, knit, knit again until your foot measures that distance listed in the pattern. Okay, so these are actual socks, sock yarn, right? This is a toe and I am working up through the foot to get to the next section. All right. So that covers everything you need to know for this week's video regarding Magic Loop and the nine inch circulars. So if you're like, hey, great, I'm ready. I wanna get that pattern. I wanna grab my needles. I wanna grab my yarn. I wanna get started. Fantastic, get started with it. For those of you who are like, mm, not really sure Magic Loop is for me. I don't know if I can distinguish what needle is what and where. Maybe two circulars are more your style. So what I'm gonna do next is essentially take you through everything I just did for Magic Loop, but using two circulars, because maybe that's something that you wanna give a try. So let's start off with two circulars and working Judy's Magic Cast On. When I taught toe up socks at my local yarn store, I always taught using two circular needles that were two different lengths and two different types. The reason I did that is it becomes much more visually obvious that one needle has the instep stitches and one needle has the sole stitches. And as you're working the instep stitches, you will always only use the corresponding needle tip to the needle that is on that has the stitches on it, okay? So for example, if I were to take the toe of this sock and set it right here, and let's imagine that these are the instep stitches and I put those stitches on this needle. And these are the sole stitches and I put those stitches on this needle. As I work round and round and round and I get the stitches on the needles in the starting position, when I move the bottom needle to the cord, the top needle, if it has the bamboo needle on it, I wanna make sure I have the corresponding bamboo tip. If it has these metal silver needle uh, tip on it, I wanna make sure I use the corresponding one here. I would never use one metal and one bamboo and cross over. These are always independent of one another, okay? I found that when beginner toe-up sock knitters had two completely different needles on the instep and the sole, they were able to easily see where the stitches were and what needle they had to use in order to work along. So let's get started with Judy's Magic Cast On. This time I will start without the slip knot. I simply place the yarn in my hand just like I would do for the long tail cast on. I will take what would be my top needle, I'm gonna use this bamboo one for my top needle, rest it on to that string and just swivel around and then I just kind of twisted that yarn on there. Now I rest my bottom needle right up next to it, okay? This is just like magic loop at this point, right? That's exactly what it looks like. 
It's as if both of these needles were the same needle and this was the same cord. I just carry on and do exactly like we did with Magic Loop. I take my needles. I will start off by putting this yarn on my bottom needle because I already have some yarn on my top needle. So I swivel my needles up and I scoop around and place that yarn on my bottom needle. And I swivel down, going on top of the yarn, and scoop and put that yarn on my top needle. Scoop, scoop, scoop. This is one of those things that you can sit and practice and not really go very far at all and rip it out and do it again just to get some practice, okay? You wanna make sure you're keeping these stitches nice and snug. And as you're putting them on, you'll notice you're doing one stitch at the top. That was the first stitch we did. We did one stitch at the bottom. So when we get all of our stitches cast on, half of our stitches will be on the top and half of our stitches will be on the bottom. The last stitch we put on our needle will be the one on the bottom, okay? So you wanna cast on the number of stitches for your pattern. Once you reach that amount, you will swivel both of these needles around. Don't lose that last stitch you put on. See how that, that tail there wants to go away? You don't wanna let that tail go away. All right, don't let it fall off. Once you get these swivel around, take your tail and kind of tuck it behind your working yarn just to give it a little bit of a twist with your yarn. If I twist this over, see how the stitches, they're kind of twisted around each other, okay? Now I am at my starting position, and this starting position is the same for magic loop and two circulars. But here's the convenient thing. With these two circulars, I can distinguish between my top needle, which is metal, my bottom, bottom needle, which is bamboo. So I will move my bottom needle out of the way, make those stitches go to the cord, and then I wanna make sure I grab the other end of my metal needle. It's a really long cord. So I grab the other end of my metal needle and I will knit across these stitches. I'm sorry this cord is curling up on me here. It's really super long, which is convenient when you're doing magic loop, not so much when you're doing two circulars. Like I usually only like to keep my two circulars no longer than 32 inches, but that's a personal preference. When you get to the end, just like any other uh, time you get to the end of a needle, you will rotate. So now everything's in my left hand. I wanna get back to my starting position. So I'm gonna put those stitches that were on a cord back on my needle. So it's going back on my bamboo needle. Get it all on there. Make sure that is not, don't let that up there and get an extra stitch. Make sure you keep it down there. Okay, and back in my starting position, my bamboo needle is on top. Those are the ones I wanna knit. So I'm gonna move the bottom stitches to the cord. I wanna make sure I grab my other bamboo needle, okay, because it's always bamboo to bamboo. I will knit this first stitch just like normal. It was just twisted on, there's no knot there. You just, just knit it. Now, these stitches here, right after you do Judy's Magic Cast On, they are sitting on your needle, backwards, okay? This, so this front, the back leg is ahead of the front leg. So you need to knit it through the back leg to make sure that those stitches do not get twisted. And it's just on this row that these stitches will present themselves like that, okay? So you don't have to do this every single row. It's just on this row, all right? When I get to the end of the row, I rotate again. I will get back into my starting position. So I want to place those stitches that were on the cord back on my needle. See how long, how long this cord is? So it takes forever to get it back onto the needle, but you can see how that works. And here we go. I am back to my starting point. So at this point, I've done Judy's Magic Cast On and I've knit one full round even. After you've done that, it's time to move on to the toe, and the toe is where you will work an increase to get out to the number of stitches you need for the rest of your foot. The toe of a sock can be increased using knit front and backs, make ones with the bar, 
I am choosing to use a right lifted make one and a left lifted make one because they do not create holes and they look really pretty along the toes of the sock. So let me show you how to do these really simple increases. Okay, so we have our lovely stitches here all started and it's time to continue on with our increases. So I'm at my starting position. I can move this needle down out of the way and I wanna make sure I grab my other end of my metal needle and I begin working in my pattern. So the pattern says to knit one, make sure I get my working yarn here. We'll knit one stitch and then I will add a marker. So I place a marker right there and that helps me remember that that is needle one. So say I put these down and I can't remember if my bamboo was needle one or my metal was needle one. I now have a marker there to let me know. Now it's time to do my increase and here we go. All right, you know what? Let me try and get a little bit closer. Okay, let's hope I don't get out of frame here. You can see the stitch on my needle here. That is the daughter stitch, okay? The stitch right below my needle, that is the mother stitch. What I wanna do is take my right hand needle, go from back to front through the right leg of the mother. Once I've done that, I will take that leg, lift it up, put it onto my left hand needle, and knit it. That is a right lifted make one. Then I will knit down to the last stitch of this needle. Okay, so this is needle one. I'm gonna knit down to the last stitch of this needle, which is right there. And it's at this point, I'm gonna do the left lifted make one, and I'm gonna do it over here. So we have the, the daughter, we have the mother, that's the stitch that just jumped off my left hand needle, and the grandmother. So I'm gonna take my left hand needle, I'm gonna go in from the back and grab the left leg of the grandmother and place that on my left hand needle. And now I wanna knit it through the back leg. And then knit my last stitch. I just worked an increase right here and an increase right there. I still have my needle two to work my increases because I want four increases on each of my increase rounds. So I rotate my work I will put my stitches back on a needle so I get back to a starting position. Okay, I'm ready to go to needle two. So I place these stitches onto a cord. Make sure I grab the other needle that corresponds to the one with my stitches on it. And I continue. So I will knit this first stitch on needle two now I have to do an increase. So that's my daughter and that's my mother. So I'm going from the back to the front. I'm gonna grab the right leg of the mother, place it onto my left hand needle, and then knit it. And then knit the next stitch. I will knit this down to the last stitch of the row. That's the daughter, that's the mother. I'll take my left hand needle, going from back to front, grab the left leg of the grandmother, and then knit that grandmother stitch through the back leg, and then knit the last one. I've now worked an increase at this point, and this point, this point, and this point. I rotate my work, and get back to my starting position. If you need to pause the video at this point to give this a try a couple times, go ahead and do that. Don't be afraid to hit pause and to rip out your work and try again. That's the only way we learn. Remember to be kind and be patient with yourself along the way though. This is something new. Okay, once we've done those increases, we now want to do a round that we work evenly, which just means we're going to work around without any increases. So I've placed my stitches on my cord, grab the other end of the needle with my stitches on it that I'm going to work into, and then continue on. 
The convenient thing here is hopefully if you watched the magic loop portion of this video, you're starting to kind of see the rhythm and see, oh, okay. So instead of having just one long needle where everything kind of rests on the cord and you just have two tips, we just have two different needles completely. And our needles represent different sides of our sock. That's all that's going on. That's the only difference between two circulars and magic loop. Um, I feel like you can decide what works best for you and how you want to work on your socks. If two circulars makes it easier for you to see how the stitches work up and where they need to go, then use two circulars. If magic loop works better for you, then use magic loop. You go ahead and you can knit this side now. And as you're working along, here at the start, it feels kind of funny because you're working in the round, but it isn't really cupping on itself yet. But as you get a couple more rounds of increases, you will begin to notice that this is starting to cup on itself. It'll start to cup on itself just like that, okay? And that's when your work, I'm gonna move this out of the way. <laughs> will look a little something like this, okay? So I just took what I did on Magic Loop and I transferred it over to where I have two different circulars. Again, I chose two different ones so I could better see what was what, <clears throat> but it's the same process. I wanna make sure I grab the same color needle as the needle that I'm working into. Make sure that those go on the cord and then I carry on. So I would just knit that first stitch, slip my marker, then I have to decide, am I on an increase row or not? Well, I can go ahead and pull up the leg of the mother here and take a peek, and I can tell that that is a row I'm supposed to increase. That is not an increased row already. So I place that up there, and I will knit the mother, knit the next stitch over, and then carry on. And I will do this until I reach the total number of stitches I need for the size I am making. Once I've reached that number of stitches, just like when I talked about in the magic loop, once you finish round two and you have the total number of stitches you need for the toe of your sock, make sure you grab a removable stitch marker and mark about the center stitch on the sole of your sock. And that will be a point for you to measure your second sock against to make sure they are the same size. Then you just continue on either working on your two circulars or switching over to magic loop or switching over to, uh, I got needles everywhere, your nine inch circulars and just work the foot of your sock. It's just a tube of stockinette stitch. And if you do transfer over to your nine inch circulars, the biggest thing to think about is just holding those needles nice and light. You don't want to grip them really super hard. You just kind of hold them real nice and light and you just work round and round and round and round. Keep your stitch marker in place so that way you know what the start of your round is. And when it comes time to do the heel of your sock, we will transition back to putting those heel stitches or the sole stitches on a longer needle because it's a lot easier to work the German short row with the longer needle in my opinion. And so I'm going to walk you through how to do that in future patterns. If you find that working with the shorter needles is just fine for you, that's something you can absolutely do. But I already have you using the longer needle for the toe, so it shouldn't be difficult for you then to use it again for the heel. All right, so your homework for this week is to finish the toe and the foot of the sock and be ready for next week's video where we will learn how to do the German short row heel. It's a lot of fun to do. And by the end of the German short row heel, you'll be able to try on your sock and see if it fits. That's the beauty of toe up socks. I really hope you're enjoying this sock along with me. If you are a crocheter, don't forget to check out the pattern by Ron Strong. It is available in the same location that you found this pattern. You'll see there's a crochet pattern as well. And there's also a crochet tutorial series going on for that on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. So you can check those out. 
If you are working on this sock, don't forget to share with us on social media. Use hashtag SockAlong, hashtag MarleyBird, or hashtag RonStrong. If you have questions, you can always ask them right here on this video or in the Marley's Minions Facebook group. You're always there to lend a hand. I'm Marley Bird, and I can't wait to see the socks you're creating. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye, guys.